Hi guys, today we're gonna diagnose and fix this uh, switch mode power supply. But before we start diagnosing and fixing it, let's just have a quick conversation about what the switch mode power supply is. Okay, in order to explain how switch mode power supply works, I drew this little diagram. It's, it's super oversimplified, but I think this is the way it should be for our purposes. So we have 230 volts, uh, if you live in Australia, it's probably 230 volts AC coming in here, but in your country it can be 220 or 240, but basically it's a high voltage AC coming here. And then there's a, a diode bridge rectifier that turns that 230 volts into high voltage DC. I don't know the exact number, but because of the root mean square characteristics of AC current, is going to be DC voltage um, that is uh, typically higher than that level of AC so it's going to be higher DC voltage than 230 volts uh, of incoming uh, AC voltage in our case I assume the multimeter will show something around 330 to 360 uh, volts DC so yeah very high DC voltage is expected to be after a diode bridge rectifier right here then we also have a filtering capacitor right here and a step down transformer uh, if you know how transformers work they need ac current um, or some sort of pulsating dc current in order to obtain the variable er electromagnetic field i should have probably said in the beginning of that video that this is not a like 100 percent tu tutorial from level zero it's more like a brief explanation of uh, smps and it's more like a demonstration of um, my my thought process and my diagnosis Anyways, as I said before, uh, transformers, uh, they do need variable electromagnetic field in, uh, in order to step down high voltage uh, to the level we need. And this is when this IC steps in. What it does, it connects and uh, disconnects the, the primary coil of the transformer very quickly. When I say very quickly, I mean 50 or maybe 100 kilohertz. That means 50,000 times or 100,000 times. A second that's basically making the tap 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 and connects and disconnects the primary circuit of the transformer to ground and this is also the main reason why uh, switch mode power supplies typically have way smaller transformer size than linear power supplies because of that crazy high frequency of of switching the transformer so after the transformer when uh, our voltage being stepped down to required level we need to make sure it stays at that level that means we need to organize some sort of um, feedback feedback loop back to ic and that is in control so we have an opto isolator here and uh, the reason for using opto isolator is because um, you really don't want to connect your your secondary circuit to your primary circuit so you don't want if, if something fails like you don't want to just hook up that wire and connect it to your IC because if something fails, something will short circuit, there is a chance that, that your secondary circuit, the voltage that you're actually using, it can be 12 volts or five volts. So your output voltage can be somehow connected to your uh, main voltage, which is in this case, the high voltage 200 to 230 volts um, AC. And because you don't want it, you want to completely isolate that feedback. There is no way it can it can be physically connected to your primary circuit. And the way to do it is to use, as I said before, opto isolator. The way it works is uh, we have a, it, it's normally encased in a non-transparent box, uh, like a case. And uh, there is a, an, could be LED, basically there's a light emitting diode and um, something that is light sensitive. It could be light sensitive transistor or resistor, basically something that's light sensitive and that will change uh, its resistance or so it will open or close and uh, send it will convert that voltage uh, basically it will convert the light from LED into potential difference and will feed it to to IC so there is no actual way they only connected the feedback loop and IC they only connect it via the the light for example in a situation if we have <coughs> if, if the voltage drops here then the, the light emitting diode will uh, react to that and it will send different amount of light and that information will be sent to IC and AC will start switching it more often uh, and change the way switching the primary circuit of the uh, transformer and give us more output but if the voltage your output voltage is going too high for instance from 12 volts maybe to you know say 15 16 volts that is not what we want again the light emitting diode will uh, react in a certain way and that information will be sent 
while the feedback loop it will be sent to IC and IC will stop that tapping that switching on and off uh, the primary coil of the transformer and the voltage will go down on your on your output and I probably need to say it again it's a little bit oversimplified so it's not the exact way how it's connected uh, there's more to that but for educational purposes for you know understanding how system works that's enough that I think that's that's a perfect representation how um, how the whole system operates to summarize all of that uh, the main advantages of um, switch mode power supplies is that they are typically small and light they also have a um, small conversion loss so heat generation there's not that much heat generation typically less than with linear power supplies the disadvantages would be they're noisy and i don't mean they're noisy like audibly noisy they create lots of electric noise that's why they also they typically a little bit more expensive uh, because uh, you need to introduce some sort of you know noise filtering that can be quite complex on the other hand uh, linear power supplies they also have the advantages uh, for instance that they typically they are simpler that they have more like simple design but the disadvantage is that they are big and heavy uh, also lots of conversion loss so more heat generation uh, but the advantages again it's a uh, low cost and probably the biggest advantage of the linear power supplies it's a low electric noise let's have a quick look at linear power supply and uh, you probably see the difference right now is that transformer is con directly connected to uh, main power supply i mean maybe not directly there would be a switch and um, a fuse but basically it's connected to your main power supply to your ac power supply stepping down voltage uh, and then we feed in that power to uh, bridge rectifier and after that basically going to your, to your output through capacitors and uh, stabilizing circuit but the main difference is that transformer <coughs> is uh, running on the, the frequency of the transformer is predetermined but what frequency you have on your power supply which is what's coming from your wall so if you plug it into the wall that would be 60 or 50 hertz and this is uh, the main sort of drawback of that system of that design because uh, low frequency means you need a bigger transformer because less of that switching but on the positive side is less of that switching so it's less you know abrupt switching on and off that's why some applications they run better on uh, linear mode power supply because they, they quieter they're not as noisy they don't create that much electric noise as um, a switching mode power supply all right now let's take a look how it's all organized in real life and uh, you already can tell how it's all way more complex than you saw on that simple diagram so there's a bunch of components and um, uh you know there's lots of stuff going on here so that particular power supply is from the battery charger car battery charger um it's actually not the battery charger it's the battery it's a car power supply that you hook up to your vehicle and it gives you a steady 40 14 volts and um, i don't know up to 60 amp of current in case if you need to do you know, programming or something and you don't want your battery voltage to go down so you hook it up and uh, the car can stay uh, with the ignition being on for a long time and the problem with uh, with this one was uh so once you switch it on there was no output so you plug it into the wall you switch it on but uh, uh, these two terminals are going to to your uh, alligators uh, which you hook up on the battery but there was nothing so no no output uh, zero volts on the output and uh, it consists of two boards one and two and uh, if you look closer so what can we see here this is uh, main input so align neutral and ground then we can see uh, x-rated capacitor so it's placed between line and neutral and it's for filtering AMI and RFI basically filtering the noise uh, then we have a few other capacitors in here then a couple of um, AC line filters uh, with um, fried beads the bridge rectifiers a couple of those with the heatsink and the relay and there's something here that looks like um, a couple of transformers but i actually i don't think these uh, transformers they're most likely a couple of big you know, inductors uh the reason i don't think these are transformers is because i can see only you know one input and one output so in case of transformer there will be secondary and primary winding but i think it's just uh, an inductor 
not a lot of things going on on the other side of the PCB. There's a massive heatsink and um, four uh, MOSFETs or IGPTs, which is an isolated uh, gate bipolar transistor. And uh, of course, you can start diagnosing, you know, start checking each component uh, one by one and see what's wrong with it. But uh, if you, you know, have a little of strategy, you can sort of understand which components is more susceptible uh, to fail. So you're not just gonna check everything one by one. You you can start diagnosing it with something that, that is simpler to check. For instance, that fuse, okay, pretty simple. You check the fuse, fuse is fine. In other way, you can start the, you know, all the way around. You can sort of go backwards. For instance, if you look in here, you see that there is a high voltage uh, negative and positive and that high voltage is going to this board right here so when it's all in in box when it's all um, plugging all together so this box these uh, two boards they connected to each other and high voltage from here uh, is going over there so the main purpose of that board is to take the power from the wall and uh, convert it ac to dc and then send that high voltage uh, dc uh, into that um, the second board which is over there and uh, when it's all plugged in and if you can start measuring here and if you have that high voltage so there's probably no reason to check every single component here you know your problem probably not uh, in here it's, it's somewhere else in that part of the circuit so the way it was uh, once I measured the voltage uh, I did have a high voltage right here but no output on the on the secondary circuit. Well, I examined many components, uh, uh, couldn't find anything obvious, like something that's burned or something that's dislocated, you know, exploded, or you don't see any you know, discoloration or nothing like that. So then I checked the fuse, which is uh, right over here. And this is a 10 amp ceramic fuse and the fuse was popped. So I thought, okay, something is, um, there's a short circuit, uh, you know, it could be anything. Yeah, it's pretty complex boards. It can be anything. Uh, but then I just I start checking some of the you know most obvious components, and I found that there was problem with that cap right here, which I replaced, and I was so happy. I thought, okay, this is an easy fix. So after that, I replaced the fuse, and uh, the good thing also is measure resistance from here because you're not supposed to have. A very low resistance right because you understand if you have like a 330 volts coming in here and you have a low overall resistance of the board so your current obviously will go through the roof you can actually calculate the amount of current you're gonna have so once I measured resistance in here it was pretty low and then I thought man there's something else is going on and I started to check some of the components uh, transformers inductors uh, checked all the caps again pretty when caps failing, uh, you can often see actually like, you know, mechanical damage and uh, swelling. Couldn't find anything like that. I even checked the temperature sensor on the sink, on the heat sink. There's a temperature sensor that's telling uh, the logic board the temperature is too high to shut it off, but um, couldn't find anything wrong with it. Then I decided to check uh, these MOSFETs, which are basically a hard working horse because it's this is what's making that switching. So this is what the lots of lots of heat going through it, lots of power going through it. But the problem is you cannot always check them in circuit because once what is soldered in circuit, I mean there are some ways to sort of have a good guess, but quite often you will find that it's hard to see if the MOSFET is uh, good or bad when it's in circuit because it's obviously the source drain and gate they they connected to something. And once you measure the resistance um, or the voltage drop across the you know pn junction you will see that you obviously measure the resistance of that consumer so i had to actually solder them out and measure the resistance of each of them and uh, this is where my problem was